From the birth of a supercontinent to the deadliest extinction event in the history of our planet, this is what the Earth looked like when America used to neighbor Africa. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 8. Pangaea Today, the surface of our planet is mainly formed by seven large land masses, referred to as continents. They are separated by oceans, such as in the case of Australia and Antarctica, or connected by small strips of land, like North and South America or Africa and Asia. However, about 335 million years ago, these giant land masses were all part of a single supercontinent called Pangaea. Unlike the present-day distribution of continental mass, most of Pangaea was in the Southern Hemisphere. In this context, the Eastern United States neighbored Africa, which occupied a somewhat central position in the supercontinent, also neighboring the Middle East, Antarctica, Europe, and South America. The North was mostly dominated by present-day Russia and China. The formation and subsequent separation of Pangaea into the continents of today took millions of years in a process that is likely to repeat as time passes. Number 7. Formation More than 400 million years ago, a continent called Laurentia, which included parts of North America, collided with smaller land masses to form Euramerica. It then merged with a supercontinent called Gondwana, which included Australia, Africa, South America, and parts of the Indian subcontinent. Pangaea wasn't the first supercontinent in the history of our planet, which spans roughly 4.5 billion years. These gigantic land masses seem to have been involved in a cyclical process, as they form and break away every 300 to 500 million years. For example, a supercontinent called Nuna was formed about 2 billion years ago, and after it separated, Rodentia emerged from the assembly of its fragments. The main theory for what drives this cyclical process is called plate tectonics. It states that the outermost shell of our planet, called the lithosphere, is broken into several tectonic plates which move around the surface over an extended time period. This is possible because the shell beneath the lithosphere, called the astensophere, is less rigid and has less mechanical strength. Over time, it behaves almost in liquid fashion. The mantle, the layer between the core of the planet and the surface crust, plays an essential role in this process. Mantle convection is the slow creeping of Earth's solid mantle as currents carry heat from the planet's interior to the planet's surface. This process of churning and circulation in the mantle is what's believed to have led to the formation and separation of supercontinents. Pangaea is the latest and best understood of them. However, scientists are still debating what forces are responsible for the movement of tectonic plates. The heat most likely comes from the decay of unstable elements such as uranium, but it still isn't known if the entire mantle acts like a heat conveyor belt or if there are particular pockets of heat flow. Pangaea started breaking apart about 175 million years ago and the progressive movement of the plates eventually led to the present-day landmass distribution. Number 6. Proof of Existence While the forces behind its formation are still being debated, the scientific proof for the existence of Pangaea. Fossilized remains of plants and animals from identical species have been found on continents which are now much farther apart. There are also matching geological trends in adjacent continents, such as on the western coast of Africa and the eastern coast of South America. Glacial deposits of the same size and structure have been found on separate continents, indicating they were once under the same ice cap. The idea of a supercontinent is also reflected by the continuity of mountain chains, like from the Appalachian and Allegheny Ranges in North America to the Varaskian Mountains in Europe and Africa. Before we move on, it's time for our quiz question. Which of these is often cited as evidence for the formation of Pangaea? Is it A. Human evolution B. Sedimentary rocks C. Volcanoes D. Tidal waves Let us know what you think in the comment section below and stay tuned to find out the right answer. 
Number 5. Name. The recent theory of plate tectonics was built upon a previous theory, that of the continental drift. It states that over time, the continents moved away from each other, that they appear to have drifted across the ocean bed. Speculations on an ancient supercontinent have been made before, based on the manner in which continental coastlines appear to fit together. However, the man often credited for the continental drift theory is German researcher Alfred Wengener, who published his hypotheses in 1912. He refers to the ancient supercontinent as the Pangaea of the Carboniferous. The word itself is derived from the Greek pan, meaning all or whole, and gia, meaning mother earth or land. Many refuted his theory as Wegener hadn't provided a mechanism to support his concept. Later, British geologist Arthur Holmes proposed mantle convection as the active mechanism for the continental drift. Number 4. Ocean A single continent also means a single ocean surrounding it. For Pangaea, it was a hemisphere-sized super-ocean called Panthalassa that covered almost 70% of the Earth's surface. Because of continuous tectonic plate movement, its ocean floor has disappeared entirely. Not much is known about the marine life, but evidence suggests the presence of coral, sponges, single-celled organisms, a species of mollusks called ammonites, and shelled animals called brachiopods. Panthalassa is also known as the Proto-Pacific or Old Pacific. That's because from the Mesozoic to the present era, the Pacific Ocean developed from the center of Panthalassa. The currents of Panthalassa would have been much slower than those of today's oceans. There most likely wouldn't have been such a drastic change of tides. The superocean is believed to have been very calm with a much more even temperature. The function of oceans changed as Pangaea started breaking apart, as did the flow of their currents. As they became more separated from each other, the distribution of warmth and coolness in the oceans completely changed. After the Americas connected, equatorial currents stopped passing from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. This diverted more warm currents towards Europe. There was an increase in atmospheric pressure and evaporation, which led to more rainfall. After Australia and Antarctica separated, the Antarctic Ocean was formed. A circumpolar current started rotating from west to east, stopping the transfer of tropical air and water to higher latitudes. Antarctica ultimately cooled down so much that it became frigid. Number 3. Climate The presence of one gigantic landmass would undoubtedly have influenced the climate. The interior of the continent was very dry and desert-like, as it was locked behind massive mountains, which blocked moisture or rainfall. From coal deposits found in Europe and North America, scientists have deduced that the parts of the Pangaea near the equator were probably a lush tropical forest, much like the present-day Amazonian jungle. These coal deposits take form through pressure and water that transform the biodegradable material from sinking plants or animals. In a nutshell, the climate of Pangaea was mostly arid, with recurring wet periods that sporadically featured devastating flash floods. Number 2. Flora and Fauna During Pangaea's existence of approximately 100 million years, several plants and animals flourished. Glossopterus was a tree-like plant, which grew about 12 feet tall and had tongue-shaped leaves. Fossilized Glossopterus remains have been found on continents that are now at greater distances from each other, and this is considered to be proof of Pangaea's existence. If the continents had been in their current position, the plant would have ranged from the equator to the polar circle. Plants which reproduced through spores were gradually replaced by those that reproduced through seeds. Herbivorous animals from the Traversodontidae family roamed the supercontinent and they're regarded as a mammalian ancestor. During the Permian period, 300 to 250 million years ago, beetles, cicadas, and other insects thrived. A marine reptile called Mesosaurus was also common. It too serves as proof of continental drift, as its fossilized remains have been found both in Africa and South America, two widely separated continents. 
The Mesosaurus was a coastal species, so it couldn't have crossed the ocean. Therefore, the two continents must have been joined together at one point. Unfortunately for its flourishing species, Pangaea's existence overlapped with one of the most catastrophic events in the history of life on this planet. So, which was the often cited evidence of Pangaea's formation? While a case can be made for each answer, the best fitting is B, sedimentary rocks. That's because when the rocks are formed, the magnetic minerals inside them take on the magnetic properties of the Earth. They show where the magnetic poles lie in relation to the rock. Examining their orientation has revealed how the Earth's magnetic poles have migrated through time. Number 1. Great Dying The Permian-Triassic extinction event, also known as the Great Dying, is the most severe mass extinction in the history of our planet. 70% of terrestrial vertebrates and up to 96% of all marine creatures became extinct. Unlike other similar events, not even insects were spared. It marked the end of the Permian and the beginning of the Triassic as well as the period between the Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras. Nobody knows for sure what happened, but it was most likely a combination of several factors. One of the main theories is that massive volcanic eruptions such as that of the Siberian Traps gradually poisoned the land and sea. It's also suspected that methane-producing microbes caused a runaway greenhouse effect in which the planet's land and water became uninhabitable. Another theory is that the extinction event was the result of one or more massive meteor impact events. If a meteor only a few miles in diameter collided with Earth, the energy of the impact would be equivalent to the detonation of several million nuclear weapons. Other theories include climate change, which caused the shift in ocean circulation, or the gradual reduction of the oxygen levels in the ocean. Whatever the cause, it took at least 10 million years for life on Pangaea to show the first signs of recovery. Thanks for watching. Do you know other facts or theories about Pangaea? Let us know in the comments section below.